and we're back with some more brilliance talking about some of the stitch editing and enthusiast functions that you can do in the program. Now, those of you that have Oz Advanced, you have all of these. I'm from the United States and we don't have Oz Advanced, so I get my names a little mess mixed up. But depending on the level of software that you have, if you only have Essentials, you don't have this function. But if you have Oz Advanced, you do. If you have Enthusiast, you'll have Stitch Editing. Now what Stitch Editing is, and this is just one of the functions of Enthusiast, and it allows you to manipulate a design at a stitch level. Now with Essentials, you can delete parts of a design by selecting a color from your object list and hitting the delete key and deleting it. But if you have designs, like a big design, and you only want part of it, there's no way to really delete them. So let me pop into the software and as opposed to using my hands to explain, let me show you what I'm talking about. So here I have a design that I purchased from Embroidery Library. Whoops, got that one. There's the software. <laughs> Trying to multitask here. This is um, a border, Australian Shepherd, a border collie. Reminds me of my Bubba dog. Now there's four of them. And if you look at your object list here, I'm gonna click on my, expand my list. I can't just select one of the dogs because if I select a color, it gets the whole color. Now, some people think that ungrouping this is, would do it, but the software <laughs> doesn't see these as four designs. It sees these as three colors and three colors that are grouped together to create one design. So if you were to ungroup this, so if I select my design and go to the edit menu and choose ungroup, all you all that does is separate those three colors. Meaning if I click on one of those colors in my object list, I can accidentally move it and do something bad. And we don't want to do that. So ungroup has nothing to do with what you want to do. If all you want is one of those dogs, ungrouping is not going to solve the problem. So let me select my design and group it back again so that we don't have any mistakes because I don't want to accidentally move stuff and get it out of registration. So what I really want to do is take out one of these dogs. Like say I want this little one up in the corner here. Well, first of all, I need to, I want to zoom in on it because when you're doing anything at the stitch level, you want to be able to see what it is that you're working on. So use your zoom slider here at the top to zoom in. And the compass rose puts a crosshair on what you're zooming in on so that you can actually see you know, move it so that you can actually zoom in, like moving the magnifying glass. That's what this compass rose is. And if you need to make it a little larger, that's fine. But I want to make it large enough so that I see my entire selection that I want to take out. But there's also white space going around it because I need to be able to lasso this area. So I've zoomed in, I focus, have my focus on what it is that I want to get. And I'm going to click on over here into stitch editing. So when I put my mouse cursor on this, it says I'm going to stitch editing. Now that changes my whole toolbar at the top. You notice I no longer have the sizing and the mirroring and the flipping and all those other things. I have selections, which is either a, a lasso, which is freehand or rectangular, which is great for if you want to do a pocket topper or chop something directly in half so that it's a rectangular on top. Say you wanted to segment, you had a full design and you want to break it into two pieces to put a name in the middle. That'd be perfect for using your little rectangular selection. The paintbrush, that is when you want to select a group of designs, a group of stitches, like paint them. So you select your paintbrush and you would paint over them so that you can move those stitches. So maybe if you had um, an outline around a design, you want to select the fill, only those stitches and move them a little bit more. That's what that paintbrush is for. Well, we're going to use the lasso because I know I'm going to draw a freehand select in the white space around this. So I select the lasso, I put my mouse cursor in the white space and I start to drag. And I need to make sure that I'm paying attention where the tip of my mouse is and watch where that dashed line is going in between the stitches. You don't wanna to go too wild, but that dashed line is going all the way around. It's actually connected, sort of like a rubber band. So I need to make sure that all the way around that rubber band, when I shape it, 
that dashed line contains all the stitches that I want to select. And I don't have to meet it up at the top. I can stop here because that dashed line connects it. And when I release my mouse cursor, do you see? They all got selected in there. Now, if I want to just take these guys out and separate them, so maybe I want to move him around or maybe flip him or do something separate. So I want to create a new design with him. While he's selected, I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to choose the split stitches with the line going up and down. The one that has a line going up and down just means it's going to, if it cut threads, it's going to make sure that there's needle points on either side of that cut. The one to the left of it is when you don't care and you want to gap um, maybe if you want to feather things together, 99% of the time I'm using the, what the red line going up and down. So you have two options. This is my one. So I choose this and look what happened in my object list here. I now have a separate design that says split. Now that means if I go over and I'm going to go back into select mode, so I'm getting out of stitch editing so I don't accidentally muck anything up, I can zoom out and I can select just that one design and I can move him or while he's selected, I can go up here to my little flip button or mirror button and flip him around going in the other direction. Or I can copy him to my clipboard, so he's up here in memory, go to a new design page, hit paste, center him and save my design as a brand new design so that I can maybe have that big design on the back of a jacket and put the front of this maybe on a hat or on a front uh, shirt lapel or something like that. So being able to use your lasso to select them out and grab part of a design is very important. I mean, that's just wicked cool. And it works a lot easier when you have stitch editing to just draw your lasso around it is. Now, when you have something with white space around, that makes it easy because you want to zoom in and select the white space. Now, what if we had a design that didn't have so much white space? So I'm going to go, and this is one of the Marengo designs. It's a beach, um, nice little column beach design here. And let me select it and hit the S key to zoom in. Now, when you find designs that are complicated and have lots of stuff in them, these are all little tiny designs that you can use in other places. Like for example, the little um, guy down here, wouldn't he be cute if you just had a baby bib and you wanted to have these guys going around the bottom of the baby bib or these sunglasses. Let's focus on the sunglasses because they're just, they're always great to be maybe a little border going across something. Um, so we're going to take the sunglasses out because they're fun because I want to. So if you look here at your list of colors, and you select each color one at a time, you'll see that this design stitches out in a nice order so that it's all layered. But when you get to the top, and there's quite a few colors. How many colors are in this design? Wow, quite a few. Oh, here we go. When I get to this part here, and the one above it, and the one above it. Okay, see, once we get to this point here, this is the eyeglass glasses. This is the eyeglass glasses shading. This is the pink, but it's also part of the other pink. And then this is the yellow. So there's no way to really easily select just the sunglasses because it's all connected together. So let me zoom in on our sunglasses. going to click on my little compass rose here again because I want to be able to see them. Oops, there they are. Maybe zoom out so I can see around them. Click off so I can see. I just want to see whenever you're selecting something, you want to see it. Now I'm just going to, I don't want to muck up this design. So I'm just going to cut it, take it out and then put it in another design. So I'm going to leave this one intact. So first thing you want to do is zoom in so you can see what you're working on. Next thing I want to do is go into stitch editing and I'm going to grab my lasso here, which is this guy here, freehand select. And I'm going to click hold and drag my lasso around stitches just to make sure that my entire sunglasses are encompassed. I don't really care about the other stuff that much because uh, I'll it's easier to not worry about it later. But do you see how I have the, the purple got selected and there is no purple in those sunglasses. So when I did this selection, I was thinking, well, what if I just didn't select the purple? 
Just that would just save me part of the problem or this blue or this turquoise here because they're not part of the design. So while I get out, I'm going to go back and take a look at what I'm doing here. Now the parts of, and what I'm doing is I'm going to see, let's see this part, this part. And was it these guys? No, maybe this one here. These are the only colors, 17, 18, 19, and 20. These are the only colors that are part of my, the design that, that I want. Okay, so I selected all of them at one time. If you go up here to the object pane and look at the top, there's one that says select all, and that would select all the stitches in the design. And the button that's right to the right of this says reverse selection. If I click on this button, that selects everything but those colors, and I can now go over to this little lock and hide button. If I click on that, and now click off of what's highlighted, the only thing I see are the colors in that part of the design. Everything else is still there, but I don't see them. And isn't this a lot less stressful as far as trying to select something? I think so. I'd rather, I'd like to s look at what I'm stitching and not, or st selecting. It just makes things less complicated. I don't have to worry about things. So I'm going to go back into stitch editing, grab my lasso here, and I'm going to left click and drag, and I can just drag willy nilly around this. I don't have to worry about that purple or the blue, and my mouse is just misbehaving. Don't worry about it. I got my Selection here, release my mouse button, and I'm just, I'm not going to cut it out. I'm going to go to the copy button, new design, and I'm going to paste it in here. And when I click off of it, so I'm going to go over here. The only thing I have is this one little part of the design. I go back to my original design. I can select the whole thing and just choose to unlock it so that it's now unlocked. And it's all back to the way it was. I, it's not touched. It's not split. It's just... It's the entire design. Now, when I'm looking at it with those little needle points, that's because I was just in stitch editing. And one of the shortcuts that you can use is hit the P as in Paul key on your keyboard, and that will unselect the points. Of course, if you hit the P again, it selects the points for you. So the P key on your keyboard is a great toggle for stitching, selecting, and showing stitch points. But I digress. So let's go back to our little sunglasses here. And we're going to zoom in on this select or oh, nothing selected. Let's select the guy and hit the S key on our keyboard. Whoopsie. Selected. Go up here and hit the S here so that it zooms in our selection. Now, when I'm looking at this, first of all, it's part of another design. So some of our stitches are different. I mean, they are they were hidden by other stitches. Maybe you like part of this little sunglass thing is not supposed to, it was underneath the beach ball. So he's missing stitches. Well, we can fix that. I'm going to click on my stitch editing guy here. The first thing I need to do is select this long stitch because that was hidden underneath something else. So I'm going to left click on it to select it right click on it and say, turn it into a jump stitch and make sure that there's a tie off on either end. First of all, it makes it invisible so that you can't see it. And then now you can, um, it doesn't, it's, you're not going to have that long stitch hanging out there. So select the long stitch, right click on it and say jump and ensure the tie stitches. Now these stitches here, they, you, you, we didn't have our, um, little, what do I call it? When it, when I'm going, um, it's missing part of the end of our eyeglass thing because it was hidden under the beach ball. Well, we're going to add a couple stitches here, but first I want to move this guy. So I'm going to click on, a, on one of these stitches and just move him up because he's just, he's too far down. He was kind of going to be, going to be covered. Now you can click on a, a stitch and move it. As you saw, I just select it, click it, and move it anywhere you want to move it. And I just kind of wanted to move them so that they were together. Now, while you have a stitch selected, you can hit the left arrow, arrow key. So I'm hitting the one that's pointing to the right. I'm sorry. So you have two arrow keys on your keyboard. The left goes backwards and the right goes forwards. Okay. Left, right. And so I'm just clicking on one of these stitches. And if I hit the right arrow key to see where it's going from here, I can see that 
that bottom stitch I had selected, the next stitches are the ones above it. So let me back up a little bit. So I'm hitting the left key to go backwards to see that it, see how it, up here, do you see how this is now highlighted? That's that jump stitch. Hit the right key one time and it jumped down to the bottom. At this point, I'd like to insert a few more stitches because I want it to, to, be covered. I don't want to have that little gappy thing there. So once I figure out where the first stitch is down here, if I right click on this and say insert after this stitch, my mouse cursor turns into the sewing machine needle. And that means I can go and I can left click on this side, move my mouse cursor and left click on this side, and maybe move my mouse cursor one more time just over here, left click one more time so it's where it's it's kind of there and once i'm done left clicking if i right click it just it added stitches so that i can now even even if i wanted to i can go in here and i can re move them over to actually create a nice little smooth edge on the bottom and that's all in the stitch editing part the key point is select the stitch you want to insert stitches before or after so you have to use your keyboard keys to figure out do you want to insert before or do you want to insert after, okay? Once you have that stitch selected, you right click and choose insert before or after. Your mouse becomes a sewing machine needle. So every time you left click, the needle's gonna go in the fabric. So you wanna pay attention. You don't wanna click all in the same spot. You want to pretend you're the machine and left click, left click, left click, however you need to. And once you're done left clicking, right click to stop right click your stop button and you've added your stitches so that it's nice and neat on your screen wasn't that easy and now we have a design so that we can do some fun things with and there's so much that you can do with him as far as oh i'll just keep on going here because now we have a nice little perfect design i can go out of stitch editing obviously i would resave this under a name so that i now have my little design and he can have things done to him for example under our utility menu we you showed instant repeat with the balloons and another one but that will allow me to put multiples on a page so if i wanted key fobs or something all sorts i would use instant repeat mirror times four when you have that selected that will do a cute little frame so imagine if you're trying to do a monogram frame and you can adjust the horizontal gap by making them further apart this way, maybe adjust the, the um, vertical gaps, they get a little closer together, and you can adjust the angle of your sunglasses going around to create the perfect little frame. That's just way too much fun. I'm gonna hit cancel because I'm gonna show you another fun thing that you can do with this. Under utility menu, we have carousel. Now the carousel is really kind of nice because this is perfect for monogram frames. Now think of a monogram as a circle so we have 150 by 150 and I'm going to add more because we only have five of them whoops more not less look at all those cute little sunglasses in a row and you can rotate them so that they go in the direction that you want them to so you can create the own your own custom monogram that you're looking for and what's really nice about this is once you have them that created, they're all individual little monograms or little sunglasses that are going around to frame your monogram. All you have to do now is go to utility, go to color sort. We've already done this before, the previous one. It may take a while because we have quite a few of them there, but it's gonna sort its little colors. Go to your new view. To save, look, it was able to reduce it by 52 color changes. Click on new view. It's down to four. Save this to our USB or add our um, lettering monogram to the center of it and then save it to the USB and you're good to go. And those are just some of the fun things that you can do from stitch editing to um, working with, uh, what do you call it? What else do you want? <laughs> stitch editing, segmenting out part designs, adding stitches, changing long stitches to jump stitches, and really having some fun with your software.